Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, we're going to be creating a French country Christmas book. My inspiration for today's project is this lovely little open book craft that I found at a thrift store. I loved the look of it. I was never intending to paint over it. I'm going to use it as a bit of a prototype for my project today. I'm going to be using a hardcover book that I thrifted. I'm pouring out a strong quick set wood glue into a container and then watering it down. I'm then going to use the same strong wood glue on the inside of the cover to start gluing the pages down. You can see I'm using a chip brush to spread my glue and I'm just going to start taking that watered down mixture and start applying it to the book pages. This glue is not only going to help it stick together, it's also going to stiffen the pages and make them a little bit more malleable. Now I'm taking sections of the book and you can see I'm applying that same mixture so we can stick those sections together and you'll see that I repeat the same process down the bottom. I'm adding some of that glue and then working that mixture into the pages. I want the pages to sit up a little bit as if it's an old book that's open to a certain page sort of frozen in time and I'm going to continue adding that strong glue and the watered down mixture to around the out side of the book. For the pages on the other side of the book, I'm repeating the same process, adding that mixture, taking sections of the book and applying that mixture and then adding them back down together so that we're sort of gluing them together. And you see I add even more glue to the pages. So we're basically just really trying to sort of stiffen those pages, get them to hold a particular shape. And of course I have to repeat the same process on the bottom of the book as well. I'm then going to add some of that mixture to the corners of some of the book pages and then I'm rolling some of the pages over a permanent marker. Just any rounded surface will work. I started with that particular marker, then I switched to a pencil so I could have sort of a tighter curve. And again, this is meant to look like pages of a book that are curled up, they've been worn, they've been held in that position for a long time. I'm then adding some more of that glue that hasn't been watered down. And again, this is going to make the pages stiff and it's also going to help them to hold that curled up shape. And you can go as wild as you want with this. You can do really, really thick curls of the paper. I just picked probably about maybe eight pages. I didn't really measure it and I just kept curling them up. Next, to give my book pages a bit more of a curve so they're sitting up a little bit higher, I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm just taking sections of the book, adding that hot glue, and then you see I'm sort of staggering the book pages, pulling them up so that they sit a little bit further along, if that makes sense. And I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. In doing this, I'm going to be able to get that nice curve of the book pages and it will stay in place. I'm then going to go in with some more of that wood glue again to help hold those book pages in place. And you can see I'm just applying that glue directly to the book pages. So this isn't something that I've ever done before. I couldn't really find any tutorials on how to do this. So I'm just sort of going around and making sure that I have enough of that product to hold that particular shape, to get it to stay in that particular shape. And I just thought that, well, adding that glue was the best course of action. I then also added some glue to the center of the book as well and I'm just spreading that with the brush and then I'm going to coat the open pages that we have facing up at us with that same watered down glue mixture. 
Once our book is completely dry, this is how it's looking. It's holding its form. So now we can get to the decorating part. I'm going to be painting the inside with two coats of Dixie Bell's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. I'm painting over the top of the text and you can see I'm also painting along the pages of the book on each of the sides. And I will, of course, then paint the bottom edges of the book as well. I want the whole piece to have that lovely creamy tone. Remember, you can find a full product list in the description below and most of these products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Once my two coats of paint were completely dry, I took my hot glue gun and I'm just going to add a little bit more glue underneath our curled up pages. This is going to hold them in place and also give them a little bit of support so they stay in that particular form. I'm then going to be using Roy Cycled's Neutral Christmas Masterboard and I'm going to be selecting a design to have on each of the pages. I felt like this design was great, the scale was great, so I'm going to take an artist brush with some water and I'm going to create a line and then you can see I'm just tearing the paper. I love doing this because it softens the edge and it makes it a lot less harsh. I'm then going to select this other taller Christmas tree to go on the other side. I'm going to cut around that little deer because I could always use that later. And plus we're going to have the book page curled up anyway in that section. So there's no real point in adding that there. Once I have that section cut out, I'm going to lay it on the book and then use some more of that water and tear the excess paper off. I think this will work to fill in a little bit of the gap down in the bottom right hand corner. And for the paper on the other side, I thought about keeping this little bird. I even trimmed it out and I do actually add it, but in the end I take it away because of that curled up corner. You're not gonna be able to see the little bird very well anyway. And it does clash with another part of the design that I'm going to be adding later. Today I'm using Paint Couture's Decoupage Medium in Matte to attach my paper. I'm laying down a nice coat of that decoupage medium on the left hand side there first and then once I have a even layer down I'm going to position my paper where I want it to go and I'm going to use my paintbrush to work it into the seam of the book there and then I'm also using the paintbrush to start to smooth the paper down. I did actually grab my mister bottle and misted the paper just to help it stretch and make it a little bit easier to get it to fit our curved and uneven surface. So I'm going to continue then adding product over the top and continue until I have the whole piece down. I had some excess paper on the left hand side there so I'm just very carefully tearing back that paper. I'm then repeating the same process on the right hand side, laying down a layer of that decoupage medium and then smoothing down my paper. And again, adding that water and misting that paper definitely helps it to stretch and it makes it easier to get a smoother finish. Not that we mind if we have some wrinkles here, we are going for a bit of an aged look. I then added a little bit of scrap paper to the bottom right hand corner so that that gap wasn't as obvious. Once my decoupage medium was completely dry, I took out IOD's O oh Christmas Tree Mold. This is from their new holiday release for 2023. And I'm just working some air dry clay into my mold. I've already dusted it with cornstarch. You can see I'm using my thumbs to press that clay out and get a clean line. And then I'm carefully peeling that clay out. And I'm going to be positioning that in the top left-hand corner and also creating another one of those designs to go in the right top corner. So I'm just positioning it where I want it to go and then I'm going to add a strong quick set wood glue to the back of our casting and then I'm going to position it in place and I want it to sort of drape down. It doesn't matter if little bits break off, you can always glue them back on.
Once I had that second piece glued into place, I cast this smaller little bit of greenery from the same mold. And again, just working that clay in and pressing out against that micro rim. I'm going to cast two of these. They are going to be going down in the bottom corners of our project. And then I'm going to cast a couple of these smaller little bells. I will link this mold in the description box below. I'm going to then start attaching the greenery that we created in the bottom corners and I'm going to make sure that I have enough glue so that it will hold in place. This clay appears gray right now while it's still drying but it does dry white in color. I was a little bit off camera for this part but I'm going to glue two bells on each of the top left and right hand corners on top of our greenery and then I'm going to cast three of these little baubles to hang off our greeneries. Again, I will link this mold in the description below. So I'm going to cast several of these and I am going to continue to add them until I have three on each side. I then decided to cast two more of these little bells so that I could put them in the bottom left and right hand corner on top of the greenery that we have there. I'm then using that same quick set wood glue to glue all of our pieces down. I used air dry clay for my project today, but you could definitely use a resin in these molds instead if you're not a fan of using clay. After I had everything glued down, I let my castings dry overnight. The next day, I came in with some of Dixie Belle's Juniper Limited Edition Fall Color. This is a lovely, warm green, definitely a favorite for Christmas this year. And I'm going to add it to all of the greenery that we added. Once my paint had completely dried, I grabbed Paint Couture's satin top coat and I'm going to seal the entire piece. This is going to be a great base for our next few steps. Once the top coat had dried, I grabbed IOD's Merry and Bright stamp and I want to stamp out the words Merry Christmas. But before I do that, I watered down some of my buttercream chalk mineral paint and I'm just going to do a very light wash over the area where I want it to go. There's already some text there and I felt like this would sort of subdue and fade that look so that the ink that we're going to be using with the stamps would show to its best advantage. I'm also wiping off any areas that I got the paint where I didn't want it. Once that wash was dry, I grabbed my IOD permanent black ink and I am inking up the word Merry first. I don't have this on a thin mount because it is a curved surface. So I'm going to hover over where I want it to go and then press down. And I always have one hand holding it in place while the other moves and applies pressure. I'm then taking the word Christmas and inking that up and anywhere that I've got excess ink I am using a wet wipe to wipe that off because that will end up on your project if you don't and then I am positioning the stamp where I want it to go and pressing down. Once my ink had dried, I grabbed Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze and I'm going to apply that glaze to our entire book. This is a very subtle antiquing glaze. It's a very light brown and it's not the only glaze we're going to use, but this is definitely a more subtle look. So I'm going to be applying it also over the top of our decoupage paper. It's going to sit into all of those cracks and crevices. It's going to sit along our torn edges and just give this book a lovely aged look. Once the glaze had dried, I took out my Dixie Belle Diamond Mousse. Now this had dehydrated, so it had become a little bit hard. To rehydrate, all you have to do is add a tablespoon of water at a time and give it a good stir. And you can see here, it is good to be used again. 
So then I'm taking an artist brush and I'm going to be applying that silver mousse to my ornaments and also to the bell. Now, something else that I did do is that I added a couple of drops of Dixie Bell's Gloss Clear Coat. It's a water-based product, so it works well with our mousse because that is also a water-based product. Adding that gives this particular silver a bit more of a shine, but it also helps the mousse to dry a bit quicker and set up quicker than if you just let it dry without a top coat. So I'm going to continue adding that lovely silver mousse to all of my ornaments and the bells until I have each of them painted. I want to add some silver splatter, some little dots here and there. So I'm going to water down some more of that mousse. I'm using a fan brush and then I'm going to flick some of that product onto our book pages. This is just going to be a very subtle look. Again, if this feels a little bit too much for you, you could just leave this step out. I don't want any of that silver speckles on our book pages, so I'm going to use a wet wipe to wipe back any excess. I want to add some little baubles to our greenery. So I'm going to use the end of a paintbrush in my Bronze Luxe Metallic by Paint Couture. I'm just dipping the end of my paintbrush in that metallic and then I'm dabbing it onto the greenery that we created. It does look like there could be some berries or little ornaments in that anyway, but I just picked random spots and added that. I feel like the hint of that bronze is just a really nice touch. I then also decided to add some of that bronze to the bow that is on the top of each of the little bells that we added. Before I go any further, I decided that I wanted to fix up the back of the book. It is quite messy. There's lots of other products that have seeped underneath. So I'm going to tidy that up. I'm going to be using some more of that Juniper Chalk Mineral Paint and I'm going to paint the entire back of the book to give it more of a finished look. And I'm also going to run the brush along the sides of our book covers. Now you're not going to see this. It is designed to lean against a shelf or sit on a table, but it will just feel more finished this way. Way. To add another layer of age, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze. I have a little bit on a sponge and I'm going to dab it around the edges of the book and then use a wet wipe to wipe back some of the excess. I'm also going to focus on the book pages themselves. The lovely vintage books that we like often have very worn pages that look like they have glaze on them. So this product is perfect for this. So I'm paying particular attention to the book page edges and anywhere that I think age would naturally accumulate where people would be turning the pages over time. If you're looking for more holiday project ideas, make sure you check out my Christmas playlist. I have lots of projects for you this festive season. I also added some of the glaze to the interior section of the book, the center of the book. Again, I think age would naturally accumulate there. So I'm adding some of that and then I'll use a wet wipe to wipe back some of the excess. When the glaze is dry, I'm going to use some more of Paint Couture's Satin Top Coat and I'm adding it just to the greenery sections. This is going to be acting like a glue for our next step. While the top coat is still wet, I'm going to take some glitter and I'm going to spread some of that onto the areas where we applied that top coat. And I'm just using the end of a spoon so that I'm only getting a little bit out at a time. I've also positioned my book on top of a plastic sheet so that when I tap off the excess, I can tidy it up more e easily. I want the glitter to be concentrated on the greenery, so I'm going to use a wet wipe to wipe back any excess from the book pages. I then want to add a little ribbon 
to the center. So I'm going to use some of this velvet ribbon that I got from Timu and I'm just trimming off the amount that I need. And then I'm going to use my hot glue gun to add a dab of glue up the top and then press that ribbon into place. I then used my scissors to trim off the excess down the bottom. And here's our finished French country Christmas book. I love how this turned out. It's amazing how you can take a thrifted book, some decoupage paper and some molds and create something that would look beautiful on any shelf or coffee table for the holiday season. Let me know what you think of today's project in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.